All right, so finally doing the survivor tier list. I figure it'll help people pick a survivor, and I'll talk about each of them a little bit and show my build and all that good stuff. So I'll start from the bottom and work my way up. So I think there's only one survivor that goes in C, and that is Annie. And this is the build I use with Annie. And the thing is, she's good uh, with obviously other ranged survivors, but instead of her, you can just use another hunter, uh, another hunter survivor instead of her because she just gives damage and balance bar support. When you could just have another just big gun doing that, and that's pretty much it. I mean, she doesn't really do too much. She has some good damage, but when you compare it to a hunter's damage, it's just not as good. So, in my opinion, uh, in a tier of her own. <laughs> now, there's a lot of bees. So I'm just going to throw in the ones that I think are bees and I'll talk about them after. So these guys are bees, these guys are bees, these guys are not bees, uh, and actually this guy. So let's see, from left to right, this I would say would be the order, yeah, uh, maybe, yeah. So the reason I think Ed is in B um, is because he's really the best with crossbow as we know so this is the ed build i'm using um you know best with the crossbow he's got some pretty good utility you know arguable he's a he's a close run for a i think he's the best b um but uh you know just not as good as the other hunters so that's ed uh this is pretty much the build i use for him he is really good again but the other hunters are just a little better than him Cheryl, I think, is actually the weakest healer. The thing is, she has her ability, which is the same thing as Pablo, except it doesn't always give full value. I guess you could say the same thing about Pablo, but it's easier to get value out of using amulets compared to getting full value out of her heal, because most of the time, not everybody will need that heal, whereas most of the time, everybody could use an amulet. So other than that, she's good with Shemps, of course. Here's the Cheryl build I use. Uh, she's mostly a melee, in my opinion. I mean, you really don't want her wasting bullets. She's not really great with either, though. So she's really just a support that has shemps and can lower your fear, which I think the other support can do just as well, if not better. And then the two leaders. Uh, I only slightly think Arthur is better than uh, El Jefe, or whatever his real name is, uh, because... He has a bit more consistent, just his, you know, his aura for damage, just pretty good for warriors. He's also pretty good. Um, leaders in general aren't too great, in my opinion, as you can see, but there's there's space for him. I think these two are basically tied, if I'm being honest. This is probably either way. So this is the uh, <laughs> El Jefe Ash build I use. Um, yeah, he's really good with... You know, he his aura gets br pretty good value all the time, and it's pretty much best if you have at least two warriors. Um, but it's damage, so it's going to increase you know hunter damage as well. Anybody can use fear resistance. He's pretty consistent because he has a chainsaw, and he's usually doubling that aura's effect by doing by fulfilling this requirement, right? So he's pretty decent. And this is the Arthur build, uh, slightly better than uh, the support Ash, or I should say the um, leader Ash, El Jefe, um, in terms of just damage with his melee, because he does have a sword and he is pretty good with that sword with his ability. And, you know, the, the a, a additional damage bonus he gives with light and heavy attacks is amazing, his aura is amazing, he hits just kind of harder than the other leader Ash, but um, they both provide pretty decent support with their abilities, especially if you've got at least two warriors. Um, and Cheryl, man, you know what? I almost want to do this because these two will just give so much more utility to the warriors, whereas you can use any healer. Cheryl isn't really too specialized in anything particularly great compared to the other healers. All right, on to A. So let's fill up A first. So I'm just going to throw in the ones and actually, I guess it's going to be kind of a spoiler of who's going to be in the S tier, but let's do it anyway. 
and then we'll talk about S tier last. So let me order this in the way I think they need to go. So this guy would be here, then this fella, then this guy, then uh, this looks good. Yeah, so Kelly, really good. She got a little nerf, um, but she's still really good with pretty much all the guns. She doesn't really have a specialized gun. She has the meat hammer, but you usually want to shoot with her. And because her ability is so good at surviving, uh, she's basically, in my opinion, the best out of uh, all the other, uh, well, everybody else here. So this is the build I use for Kelly. I don't use any of these, although I've seen, you know, people use the, uh, that one bullet gun plunder bus or whatever it's called. And it seems okay. The thing is, um, if you don't have that or a crossbow, you're just wasting skill points. So I just put them on headshot and all the other things to survive, do damage. Um, you can mess with these builds a little bit, but they're for the most part what's going to give you the best value for these characters. And yeah, Kelly really good, great survivability. And just pretty solid even after the nerf. The other ones, so he, he's a very close second. These are probably also interchangeable. Uh, his double barrel is just so good. And dare I say he goes here. I'm going to put him here, actually. The only thing is he obviously doesn't have as much survivability as Kelly. But with this build that I use for him, uh, he still hits pretty hard. Especially that you start with a double barrel, so you never have to worry about finding it. You do extra with it. I mean, seeing the crates through the walls is pretty useful. You can... You can see crates while you're driving, like on the side of the house, you can see if there's a crate in that house without even stopping. So pretty useful. And obviously this got nerfed, but it's still pretty good. You can save your partner from like a possessed basic early game and it can be really useful. And then we got these two warriors, which are maybe a little interchangeable also. Um, they both do really well, you know, hit your, I, I, I go with the heavy attack build on Scotty and here, let's, let's look at them. So this is my Scotty build. Immediately, I'm thinking I was messing around because I left this at 5% and I usually put it at 10. But um, I think it's because I took this point instead. So I guess it's kind of interchangeable, whatever 5% you want, but you're not always going to have a shield on, so I use this one. So yeah, I'm a heavy attacker with Scotty at pretty much the best way to play him. And he's really good as long as you find your Lumberjack Axe. And even if you don't find it, not too bad. And then even though this guy also got nerfed, still a really good. Still among the best warriors. I mean, him and Scotty are basically tied. Although I do slightly like Scotty better. But, I mean, this guy hits really hard at solid choice. Warriors in this game are all just very good. And then these two healers. So, I think... This support Ash is actually the best healer because uh, you can just keep heavy attacking and healing. And one thing that a lot of Ash supports don't do uh, is, or at least I don't see it, is using your heavy attack while a evil unit is getting finishered. You can still hit it with your heavy attack and every time it connects, even though you're not doing damage, you still heal. So a little, ti the little tip there to heal a little bit extra, but in general, just really good. Find a hunting knife or anything else that's fast, and you're just going to be healing so much, and keeping your fear down for the whole team. Just the best healer. Pablo, very close second, uh, because his amulet's really good. The thing is, his passive isn't amazing. It's good with less against less experienced demons, but the better demons will really have trouble. Um, so his value really comes from getting the amulets a lot, and also, let's see his build. So this is the build I use. Um, basically, you're using amulets every two minutes, and that's pretty much it. These other three things don't really get too much value, um, but you get a lot of amulets, which is pretty good. Uh, better than Cheryl's, in my opinion, because it's, again, uh, same cooldown, except Usually people could use amulets more than they can use health. So I prefer him over Cheryl. This is the Ash build we got. Pretty good. I mean, these last few, uh, you know, skill tiers or whatever 
are pretty underutilized, I think. Like, his ability to live is easily the best of the supports. Uh, what you could do is, if you have like a handgun or anything that can shoot with multiple bullets, a double barrel, a normal shotgun, whatever. If you hit with a headshot, follow-up teammates will heal. But with this, you can just keep hitting the same enemy with headshots and you heal every time. So, with each consecutive hit. So, obviously with the smaller things, they're going to die quick, but every bullet after the first one on a headshot will heal. So, pretty good sustained heal. Um, he lives for a long time. Just the best healer. Um, so, he's where he is. And finally, the two S tier survivors. Now, I think, again, these can kind of go in any order, but I'm going to put him in front because she can be a little crazy to control uh, because you're going to have to frequently drop your gun if you don't have the ability to lower your fear, whether it's getting to a fire or, you know, your teammates aren't able to help you lower your fear. Um, because she can basically wipe your whole team, just like Kelly can, you know, and Mr. Double Barrel. Um, although, when she's not being possessed, she has the highest DPS out of the all the hunters. You just throw on any gun, honestly. She's better without a pistol, with a double barrel or a rifle. Um, pretty much anything that hit, hits hard, plus her ability. And you can melt any boss in the game at any point in the game. So she has, without a doubt, the highest uh, ceiling DPS with her ability. So that's why she's here. Basically, better than everybody else. Uh, in terms of just range DPS. And here, let's look at her build. So this is what I have for her. Um, <laughs> I can see that I was playing around with this because it's kind of hard to get complete, uh, like full value out of this. 10% of 90, right? So 81 seconds. Um, yeah, sometimes that might come in handy. Sometimes it might not. You can also put these two points into here. Uh, sometimes I do find myself... Um, Actually, I did test out using crossbow and uh, plunderbuss, and even with your ability, it doesn't shoot fast. So this is actually pretty bad. I only use it to get this and play around with it, but if I'm being honest, I think those three skill points would probably be better on even these, these skills right here. Hmm. I may have to mess with this a little bit. Like, this is honestly not bad if you're going to go for a shotgun, but uh, the thing is you want to be using these on bosses mostly. You you won't really have trouble killing elites and such, but I mean, I guess this is a little flexible, which is even why she's even better. Um, you really don't need the defense. So, you know, mess around with how you want to use this. Uh, I've seen people put them in this and then that makes using the lever action rifle much easier. For now, I think I'll put it on this since I do pick up shotties and being able to shoddy even if you're 5 meters away with the reduced spread seems useful. Although I guess it can go in this. I'm going to put it in this for now. Have fun with it. She's so good that it doesn't matter too much. And finally, Henry. Pretty much the solo queue master. Um, you really don't need anybody at all. You can just queue up with Henry. Go in. I have a heavy attack build because I think that's the best way to go. You start with the light to get the first, you know, to stumble them st a little bit, and then you throw heavy attacks. Um, his ability, obviously, amazing. Seven second, one minute cooldown. Uh, you can use it mid attack. So while you're heavy attacking an evil ash or whoever, right before you get hit is when you want to activate that. So you can you know, you get the full value out of the 7 seconds. And you can mess with maybe some of these points, but I think this is basically the best uh, value you're going to get out of blunt weapons, which is where he does the best at. Um, you can mess with this. I see that I was messing with putting in dodge because dodge is so important. But if you want, you can put it into more blunt weapon stuff or a combo. Um, but I think dodging is so important that you want to keep uh, those skill points in dodge. So this is how I have Henry. And yeah, this is the tier list. Um, until, I guess, there's another patch.
but I think this is about roughly where everybody goes. Um, when it comes to solo queuing, it's going to be rough playing any hunter. Because if you have only one hunter, all it takes is the... I mean, the demon could be losing all game, right down to the dark ones. If he possesses a double barrel or a Kelly, and you have no other range to deal with it, uh, they're just going to kill everybody and the game's over. So, some tips. If you're going to... If you're not playing with a squad or whatever and you're going to try to play with the team somehow in terms of composition, usually running one hunter is not a good idea for the reason I just mentioned. Run at least two hunters or no hunters. That's okay. Two, three hunters, good. Uh, one hunter will be rough if they get possessed, which they most likely will. Warriors, you can't go wrong. Put one, two, three warriors, you're fine. Um, supports, I think he's the best. I don't think supports are actually necessary, believe it or not. Um, although they're very good, the thing is, if you just throw out another warrior instead of a support, um, you're you're pretty good. They just do so much damage that you won't need to heal as much, you know. So, a, a three warrior comp with a leader, either of these leaders is solid. Um, you don't even need to go three warriors, two warriors, two leaders. Um, two warriors, two hunters is pretty decent. Can be a little messy. Um, but yeah, those are kind of, maybe those kind of help give an idea of what you kind of want to do. Um, playing three hunters, I don't see it too much, I guess, but you might have ammo problems and other things like that. Warriors are without a doubt the best in the game. Ashley, uh, is amazing, will kill any boss quickly. Uh, before I start repeating myself for everything, uh, this is the survivor tier list. <laughs> I'll make a, I guess, I'll spend a few minutes to make a demon tier list, although I pretty much explained that. And yeah, let me know what you guys think, I guess. Um, I'll update this after the next update, but the game seems to be pretty stable as far as where these survivors go, give or take. So... Good luck, people. I'll, I'll put some more videos out for Survivor since I have so many for Demons, and people clearly need help playing Survivor.